Okay, uh, welcome back to Text Adventure Tutorial Part 2. Um, we're working on a game called Dead Wrong Light, which is the light version of a bigger game that I've created. Um, so in the last video, we did the HTML. Uh, we put all the basic game elements we're going to need uh, in order for us to get the programming to work and make sure that it all works the way we want it to. Um, and then uh, uh, that's pretty much it. We just left it there. So with this video, we're going to start working on the JavaScript. Now, the important thing to understand is that the HTML that we did, that little bit of HTML, um, isn't everything that you can do. Obviously, there's a huge difference between um, you know this and what we've already created, which is this, right? So there's a big difference between this and this. So and the only difference between these two things, honestly, is CSS and HTML. And you guys already know um, if you've if if you're in my class, if you're in my web design class, or if you followed some of my other tutorials, you already know how to do the HTML and the CSS properly. Um, so you should be able to fill in the gaps and make everything else work. Um, but we're just going to focus on on the JavaScript for this series. So with that in mind, let's get to it. Um, now, there's one more step that we need to take before we start programming, uh, which is planning. We want to make sure that we understand or we at least can visualize where we want everything to go. And so um, I'm going to show you a planning document that I've been working on for another game, <clears throat> which will give you the idea of kind of what I'm talking about. Um, so this is a game that I'm working on. It's just tentatively called Asylum. And uh, my son and I are actually working on it. We've been planning it out. <clears throat> and this is the game map that we're that we're looking at using. Um, and so kind of the way you should think about these adventure games is that they're on a grid. Now, um, Dead Wrong is on a 3x3 grid, just like Asylum, uh, the one that we're working on. And yours are going to be on a 3x3 grid as well, which gives you nine locations. Um, if you want to make it bigger, you can. It's just every, let's say you go to 4x4, four four, uh, then you end up having 16. You're adding an extra five locations that you didn't have to worry about programming before. Um, so sticking with a 3x3 three three for your first game is probably the best idea. And then after that, you can expand it and make it more difficult. Um, so 3x3 three three is fine. And all you have to do is just create a 3x3 three three grid in, say, Google Drawing, which is where I am at, uh, where I am right now. And then you just plan out each room. So you just write out the names of the rooms where you want your character to start. Um, these little icons are for keys and doors and which doors are required to open keys and the red lines are for blocked areas that you can't pass through, which we're not going to implement in, in this game that we're building, but um, just so that you don't get confused about the diagram. Um, and so once you have it all planned out and you know what you're going to do, then you want to start thinking about how you're going to translate this image into um, a data structure that JavaScript can understand. And the simplest way to do this is with an array. Um, and if you remember, if you, uh, if you remember arrays, arrays are essentially just, um, it's a little container and um, it's a data structure that has little uh, compartments in it. And each compartment is indexed and each index um, is represented by a number. And so we'd have, uh, where's my pencil tool? Uh, let me just scribble. All right. So you'd have an index here. The first index is going to be a zero. Uh, second index is going to be a one. Third index is going to be a two. And the fourth index is going to be a three. And so that's the way it's, it's represented. So this data structure, if you think about it like this, it really just creates a line of indexed er uh, of, of uh, areas. And if you put one of these locations into each index, you just have a line of, of these locations. Now we want them in a grid. Now all we have to do is tell our program to treat it like a grid whenever you're moving around. Um, but what we can do is, so let's say we want electroshock room in location zero. We want the lobotomy room in location one. Morgan two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, and eight, and so on. And then it becomes easy to think about how you're going to turn this map into an array. You just, in zero, you give it, you know, you tell it electroshock room. In one, lobotomy room. In two, morgue. In three, kitchen. In four, doctor's office. So that's kind of how you can think about how you're going to build your map using data structures that we've already learned. Um, so let's do the first step. Let's go ahead and build that array. So I need a script section. All right. And in the script section, I'm going to create a new... Um, I'm going to create a new array. And that array is just going to be... Uh, if you remember how to create arrays in JavaScript, you just start it with a var uh, keyword, letting him know that I, we're creating a variable. I'm going to call this map, var map, and I'm going to say it equals just an empty array. Now we can go ahead and initialize the array here on the same line just to save us, save us lines, but I'm going to show you how to do it the long way, and uh, especially better because I have already copy and copied. Oh, maybe I haven't. Oh, well, let me go ahead and copy from, yep, let me go ahead and copy it uh, from my dead wrong code right here, copy, and then we'll go back. So you can go ahead and build the array, uh, type in everything, but I'm, I've already copied and I don't want to type that much on this video. So, okay, so what we have now is we have an array called map, okay, and this array has one, two, three, four, five, nine indexes in it. And that's great because we have nine different locations we want to visit. And then what I do is in each uh, map location, I would put instead of, actually I probably should have typed these. Um, in each map location, you're just going to give it uh, the name of that location. So um, yeah, mine are all headers and whatnot. This is just so that they're represented by graphics. So, um, but you have your name locations. So, uh, office, supermarket, things like that. All right. And I will go ahead and change this between videos. I'm not going to worry about it right now. But, uh, so you just put a, a text string in there that says the name of the location. Um, and then down here, you want another variable called map, oh, sorry, map, location. And you want to initialize that with wherever you want your player to start. And we'll say they're going to start dead in the center, which if you think about the way our grid's represented, right in the middle would be map location four. So we can have them start at map location four. Okay, so now we have an array and we have a place where our player is going to begin. Um, we're going to have a place where the player is going to begin their journey. Uh, and the last thing we want, let's see, we want to initialize an output. Um, so we've built an output up here with our paragraph element. We want to initialize an output down here um, by creating another variable. We're going to call this output and we are going to document query selector which is a lot like document.getElementById. Um, we're just using query selector because it's a little bit more elegant for what we're doing. Uh, and we're going to do output, and then that's it. Okay. So now what we've already... So let's go through the logic of what we've done already. So we have our image element, which we're not using for this one. We have our paragraph element. We have our input element where the user types their information or what they want to do. We have the button. That's all on the page. And then in our script, we have a map array with different locations, strings essentially, indicating the location that the player is, is in, uh, tied to each index. And then we've said we want our player to start in index four of the map location. And we've created an output stream and tied it to a variable called output, basically document.getQuerySelector output. So because this ID, this paragraph has the ID of output attached to it, it's going to push whatever's in the output variable to this HTML element, which is what we want, right? So the last thing we have to do is we just have to say output equals map, oh, map, map location. 
Okay, so now what that's going to do is that's going to say essentially put push to the output variable, which is in turn pushing to the paragraph element, whatever is in the array of map at the map location index, which we've set our map location index to be four. So now if we were to save this and run it, now we should have, um, nothing on our, on our screen. We have, we have nothing on our screen. That's fantastic. Okay. What did I do wrong? See, this is the simplest thing in the game and I've already screwed it up. Good. Well, at least you get to see some troubleshooting, uh, as we go through it. So let's go ahead and, hmm, thinking, thinking, thinking. Oh, I remember what I did. Okay. So here's what I did. All I did was reinitialize the variable. All I did was create, it was said that whatever goes in output is going to be this, but then I replaced it with map, map location. So output is just sitting with free header. That's all that's inside of output. I still haven't told it to push it out. So instead of doing output equals, I want to put output dot inner HTML. Oh, HTML, which means I'm going to send outputs value to my HTML page. So that's the critical step that I forgot. All right, now this should work. And if it doesn't, I am, uh, I will be embarrassed. And then I'll probably redo this video so that no one ever noticed that is that I've ever made a mistake. So, Hey, look, now it works. So good. So we've troubleshot it and we figured it out. So free header is now showing up. And I have, I still have everything else. Now, if I go back here and I change my index, I change my map location ver uh, value to say seven, um, you know, think for a moment, what do you think is going to show up whenever I refresh my page? Well, if we think about it, map location seven, that's just a seven. That's just a, a an, in an integer value. That doesn't mean anything. But down here, map array with map location, which is seven in it, points to map seven, which is theater header. And I'm pushing that out to my paragraph. So whenever I refresh my page, it should say theater header instead of free header. So let's try that. Hey, it works. Okay, great. So once you get this far, um, Go ahead and uh, take a break. Congratulate yourself. Pat yourself on the back for getting this much done. We have a lot of work to do, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.